My name is Jeremy Wittes. I write poems, short stories, and articles. When I checked my email today, I saw JFGH is celebrating its 30th anniversary. Thanks to JFGH's Mary and Charles Oshinsky apartment program, today I brewed my own coffee, I shaved, I read the paper, tasks a lot of us take for granted, and to me, they mean independence. I resolved to write a little short story about JFGH's first 30 years. I called JFGH's CEO, Vivian Bass, to see where I should begin my journey. She said, either start with her predecessor, Barry Fierce, or the Jewish Federation of Greater Washington, past president Phyllis Margolius. Since Federation is very close to my apartment, I grabbed my things and headed out the door to meet with Phyllis, taking advantage of the lovely weather. Hi Phyllis, how are you? I'm great. Good to see you, Jeremy. Likewise. I spoke at the General Assembly of uh, Jewish Federations, and I was very excited because we had done something that other communities never did. We looked at the whole issues of individuals with disabilities, and we realized that we had one special need. Homes where individuals with disabilities could live their lives safely, with people who loved them, with their families involved. JFGH served a population that was not being served here and actually not being served in most places in the United States. An individual with disabilities isn't someone who is different. Um, they're part of our lives. Your kid's best friend happens to be in a wheelchair and your kids don't think anything about it, and you don't think anything about it. We're inclusive, and we should be. The Jewish Federation had a task force uh, looking at the issue of individuals with disabilities in our community. Out of that committee came the Jewish Foundation for Group Homes, which had been a dream of a lot of people, but particularly Bob and Joy Cohen, um, who happened to be my cousins. Well, thanks to Phyllis, I was off to a great start. Phyllis told me I just had to interview Bob and Joy Cohen. So I hopped on the bus with my fingers crossed that I had not missed them. I found them in the conference room looking over all the JFGH homes and I could not wait to sit and talk with them. In the early days we met, actually came out from a meeting of the Jewish Social Service Agency where other parents like ourselves, uh, the question was asked, uh, what's going to happen to our children when we're no longer here? We started our program. And we met at our home with a group of parents. We formed a board of directors. In those days, of course, uh, you couldn't start a home unless you had approval of the neighborhood. And I must say that the neighborhood reception has always been excellent. And one of the neighbors came over and made cookies with the residents. They had parties together. We wanted our homes to be the best looking ones in the neighborhood. The grass was cut, the flowers were beautiful, and our homes were kept in perfect shape. Oh, the most exciting, of course, is when the home opened. And just getting ready for the home to open, you know, we were uh, vacuuming and sweeping and buying furniture. Bob, can you tell me how it feels to know that JFGH is turning 30 this year? You know, it feels wonderful, and, and never did I, in my fondest dreams, believe we could have uh, all sorts of service provided for all types of different types of disabilities. It's a, more than a dream that's come true. It's a reality at its best, and it's a source of satisfaction to see our residents when they go out for an evening and how much fun and enjoyment they have being together with a complete social life, dancing, cheering. It makes your heart warmer and your eyes a little bit watery. Things were going great and I was still just getting started. My journey led me to the Carlin and Lawrence Silverman and Gina and Herman Porton home. 
I was very excited to meet everyone. Every home in JFGH is special, but what sets this one apart is every resident who lives here, and even some staff are deaf. Carrie's mom, Judy, happened to come over and she was able to translate for us. I saw this as a good opportunity to learn more about Carrie, her fellow residents, and what it means to be a resident at JFGH. So I wanted to find out what the group house means for Carrie first. It means um, independence for Carrie. She has independent activities, she goes to work every day, she works at Barnsley Elementary School and at the Jewish Community Center in their preschool program. So she really lives here in a, really in a deaf world, which is where she is comfortable. She has full communication, all the counselors are also deaf, and her sign language skills are excellent. So. Uh, she is always has someone to talk to and they always understand each other. When Carrie first moved in, she said to me, Mom, I want to dye my hair red. And I said, no, 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 no. And she said, you know, I am independent now. And the counselor helped her dye her hair, by the way. It was time to learn about JFGH's expansion into Northern Virginia. So I made arrangements to meet with John and Aday. We decided to meet at the Virginia Most site, modeled after the Sally and Robert Goldberg Maryland Most program in Rockville. Can you please tell me how many residential programs are in Virginia? Well, there's three in Northern Virginia, uh, two in Reston and one in Annadale. Um, I believe the homes in Reston were opened in 98 and the one in Annadale uh, opened in 2011. Actually, the, we opened in 98, 11 opened in 99, and I'll take your word on Brown Parish because I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Today, how long have you been involved with JFTH? I've been involved for 13 years, and during those 13 years, uh, I was fortunate to work in all three of the homes. I feel great actually build up a good relationship with the people that I serve, the guys in the group home. Um, you grow with them and they become like family. You do a lot of outings, a lot of activities together. What kind of activities do you do, you do here? Oh, okay, we, we do swimming, tennis, movies, outings, parties, what well, they love partying, uh, cookouts, and a lot of schooling with John. That's basically what I do. I'm a brainiac. I go to Mason. This is my sixth semester there. A day would work with me and take me from class to class. And actually, he saw me through my entire college career from start to finish. Thank you. You're welcome. I can go out and come and go as I please. That, that's the main thing. I, I have my own life, and so do my parents. I was so impressed with John and a day. I reflected on the day's theme, independence. JFGH created a program for providing independent living skills, the MOST program. While there, I had the pleasure of meeting a few participants. Two were practicing for their upcoming driving exam. Another was making plans to open her own chocolate shop. A third told me how she can't wait to get married. Well, the day was waning and I had one more stop to make. I met Vivian at the Richard and Julia Lee Rubin home. Though she had already helped me so much, I wasn't about to let her off the hook without answering a few questions. <laughs> Mind if I record our conversation we're gonna have? Not at all. I Thank think you. I can trust you on this one. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. So how does it feel to know that JFGH is turning 30 this year? Incredible. Really is, Jeremy. I, I think one of our greatest um, 
Strengths is, is also surprisingly one of our greatest weaknesses at JFGH and that we make all of this look too easy. <laughs> our residents are so involved in every aspect of life. They're always so busy doing uh, various volunteer jobs, working here and there. We do more than just give back. We really make uh, a meaningful impact on the lives of others. Can you please talk, Vivian, about your personal relationship with the clients of JFGH? I really try to have a personal relationship, like with Murray. Always compliment on his beautiful necklaces. He loves to accessorize, and so do I. We're both Elvis fans. <laughs> Murray really exemplifies a growing number of our residents. Both of his parents have passed away. Murray um, has one sibling, his brother Alan. Alan is also a participant resident at JFGH. It's when you put your head on the pillow at night, what happens if I don't wake up? This is why JFGH is, is here, to give that peace of mind, that security. You really can't put a price on that. For me, the most precious time is just not the extraordinary days, but really the ordinary days. Just like today, just knowing that at 73 other sites, just this ordinary life is going on and that it is, it is so routine and so expected. I could have spent all night hanging out, but I needed to get home so I could be ready for my job the next day at the Humane Society. I work there with a friend who is in JFGH's Greenwald CSLA program. I had learned so much about JFGH's history and felt proud and excited that we were turning 30. Writing this story would be a lot of work and a lot of fun. Before turning in, I wrote an email to everyone I met with today. To all who helped me with my story, thank you for your time, your stories, and for inspiring me. You make JFGH what it is, and that is an amazing organization that touches the lives of so many. I learned so much from all of you, and I wish I had more time today so I could have learned even more. Bottom line, working together, we make the ordinary extraordinary, and I can't wait to see what we can all accomplish over the next 30 years. Sincerely, Jeremy.